right, guys. It is a gorgeous fall evening here in the end times in the uh, paradise, I guess, of East of Bumblefuck, New Mexico. On this lovely, on this lovely, what is it? We're Wednesday, November 15th, 2017. So I'm just sitting here with my little dog enjoying as you probably know, what I like to enjoy every night is a couple of doomsday margaritas. And so I can't think of a better way to enjoy this doomsday margarita. To see how much shit I can stir up as I think back over my crazy weekend this weekend in, uh, in West Bumblefuck, New Mexico. Actually, a little bit outside of West Bumblefuck, New Mexico, where you may or may not know by this time. I'm assuming you know something, <laughs> something in my crazy weekend. I went down there to meet up with uh, Mike and Karen Sleva, who, uh, if you don't know who Mike and Karen Sleva, that's S L I W A. On uh, Sunday, I have three rants, really all together. I have a long reading from Mike Sleva's uh, book, Chasing a Different Carrot, and a long interview with Mike and Karen Sleva about their life living in one of these unintentional communities down there in New Mexico. And I encourage you to go uh, to go listen to those videos if you want to find out more about Mike and Karen. But, of course, the big news, the big news, when I was down there, completely out of the blue, completely out of the blue, I was told uh, by uh, Mike, and Karen just mentioned to me that Guy McPherson, Guy McPherson, my uh, my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero slash nemesis. Is there such thing as a a hero slash nemesis uh, <laughs> here? Uh, was right next door at the mud hut. Completely. Uh, took me, bowled me over by surprise that Hambone Little Tail was less than one mile away from Guy McPherson down in the mud hut. Now, there was this unfortunate little problem, and I don't know what, what I, you know, how am I going to handle this because I have banned discussion of this on my own channel. A couple of months ago, I banned pretty much the mention of Guy McPherson's name on this channel. Uh, so, th this makes it a little touchy that I'm violating that I'm violating my own ban. So, uh, w without getting into the goddamn uh, drama uh, around this. Uh, Mike Sleva, a former close buddy of, of, of guys, and they, he was the co-host of the Nature Bats last program for years. I think they did, I think Mike did 105 episodes with Guy. But anyway, there was an unfortunate, very sad little, uh, oh, Good God, I don't even know how to word it. You either do or you don't know the shit that went down uh, a couple of months ago in uh, w w with Guy McPherson. I'm not going to get into it because I don't want to drag this channel down into this sordid fucking little personal drama. Uh, I have had two videos on this little drama. Uh, already, which is too too many. 
Uh, I have my, I, I have stated my opinion on the little drama itself, and then I banned all mention of this fucking little uh, drama in the Doomosphere, this distraction with a capital D uh, distracting from the message that we need to be taught, that I and Guy and Mike, all three, need to be talking about. And that's what's going on on this planet and not getting sucked down into this fucking little drama. But, but, but of course, what has happened since then, and, and I'm just going to say it because I'm sure you already know this, we, we've gone to the next layer of drama where Guy McPherson is now suing, uh, or he's either actively suing or he's in the process of suing Mike Sleva, my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero Mike Sleva, my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero Derek Jensen, who I will be interviewing tomorrow. I will see if I can refrain from getting into this little drama with Derek. So we, we, we have my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Guy McPherson, suing my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Derek Jensen, Mike Sleva, uh, who all else, for uh, slandering and defaming him uh, as, as an offshoot of this never-ending, uh, snowballing little personal drama. And... My my comment to that, if anybody uh, watched my little uh, Sancho Panza butt sniffing uh, little joke video I did yesterday, if you want to know my comment about Guy McPherson suing Mike Sleva and Derek Jensen for slander and libel, uh, everything I have to say on that subject. Um, is there in that Sancho Panza butt sniffing video. And, and so anyway, with, with all of this as a backstory, here I am, less than, less than one mile from Guy McPherson's house. And, and for a little more backstory, for, for those of you who are not aware of it, uh, I have had... I actually counted this up uh, last spring when I made a public apology to Guy McPherson for calling him a, uh, a fucking asshole. No, I'm sorry, a fucking idiot. He's the one who called me an asshole and I called him a fucking idiot. He apologized to me. I apologized to him. And so I went and counted up the videos where I trash talked uh, Guy McPherson. I found 32 videos that I had done about Guy McPherson over eight years in Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Four of the 32 of, of these videos is, I quote, slandered, as Guy would call it. Uh, I think, I, I don't know if Guy was joking, uh, accusing me of slander or not. And all four cases were me just being exasperated with Guy McPherson, who is, who is the farthest thing from a clueless fucking moron uh, out there. You know, I just get exasperated uh, with, with the rock star of doom. Uh, you, you know, the, the, the king of the doomosphere, the Elvis Presley of doom, when he goes out there and just makes absolutely wild uh, recklessly wild statements and I just called them out four times. I make, it's there for the record as we said in the, as, as Guy said in the interview, uh, I'm sorry, not an interview, in our casual conversation Saturday night, uh, Guy pointed out uh, in our casual conversation, thank you Guy, for posting this on Nature Bats Last, a casual conversation that Hambone Littletail and Guy McPherson were having. It was not an interview. It was a casual conversation. In that conversation, 
uh, you know, uh, as Guy pointed out, it's there for the record. Anyone who wants to look it up can, can go see it. I make no apologies to Guy McPherson uh, for anything I've, I've ever said by holding his feet to the fire. Uh, I, it, you know, I appreciate it. As I told Guy, uh, we got a chuckle over this, that some point I, I misspelled Cincinnati, Ohio in the, in the description of my video. Two people writing me to point out that Cincinnati has two ends instead of one. So I know what it feels like, Guy, to have your feet held to the fire. Uh, by, by Alert Tribes members, and I appreciate it, and I invite anyone when I make just a, just a, 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 you know, just a ridiculous claim with absolutely nothing to back it up, not only nothing to back it up, that, that can be instantly disproved in the space of five minutes. Uh, let me know. Read me the riot act. Rip me a new asshole. I have no apologies to make to Guy McPherson of anything I have ever said. I have never slandered the man except maybe calling him a fucking asshole. I think that is when he made the claim that the U.S. military was the third biggest military in the world until Jimmy Carter, it was Jimmy Carter who took the U.S. military from the third largest to the first largest. At that point, and I did call him a fucking idiot, and I did go apologize for it, and because, as I say, he just exasperates me. And uh, so my, my, my quote, uh, my, my quote, defamation of Guy McPherson is just a result uh, of, of the man exasperating me. Um, and, and I think he understands that. But anyway, so we have had this little thing going for years. I am, you know, obviously I am a little gnat, a whiny little gnat in uh, Guy McPherson's ear uh, to swat. So he has never agreed uh, to interview me. And, but, but, you gotta understand, guys. Interestingly enough, while guy, uh, while we've had this little thing going on, we we email each other regularly. That uh, we we have an email uh, that we have been emailing back and forth uh, for quite a while. It's not like I am a total stranger, a complete total stranger to Guy McPherson. A, we have shared plenty of private emails and even discussed me coming down to Belize uh, to visit him where he did say uh, if, if I made it to Belize, at that point we would sit down and have a conversation. Well, the universe uh, saved me a trip from going to, to Belize. The universe took Guy McPherson one less than one mile away from me. And so, well, he's told me that uh, if I ever come to Belize, he drop by and we'll have an interview. Well, you know, uh, so obviously, guys, I was not going to let this opportunity from the universe pass me by, but, uh, but of course, there is all of this backstory, not, not so much the, the, the four times that I had held Guy's uh, feet to the flames, uh, and, and as much as this little, this little, uh, this little drama uh, that blew up in the Doomosphere a few weeks ago and then went into chapter two, when Guy started this GoFundMe account to, uh, to sue Derek Jensen and Mike Sleva, uh, among others, for slandering and defaming him. And I, I just find the whole fucking thing sad. It's just sad. All it has done is, is, is 
put a big fucking meat cleaver in, in the middle uh, of and, and, and just divided. Uh, I mean, friendships have been ruined over this. Uh, years long friendships have been destroyed. Uh, it, it's like a bunch of goddamn little junior high schoolers. Uh, and, and, and I, as I say, I just, and, and after this, and, and after this rant, I, I'm going back. And this, this is going to be the last time I, I ever have this discussion. I will try to stick with that. Uh, so anyway, this was the backstory when I showed up at, at Guy McPherson's on, uh, on Saturday morning. And so I went there and then just knocked on the door. And if I didn't make it clear enough in the video from Saturday night, Guy McPherson from the moment I met the man had towards me has been nothing but an absolute gentleman. He has been nothing but friendly, polite, welcoming. Uh, within my first three minutes of laying eyes on this man, I, we'd already hugged. Uh, he pours me a cup of coffee, gives me a bagel with cream cheese for breakfast Saturday morning. And he had, he had a busy day, and so did I. So what I thought that we had arranged on Saturday morning uh, was that I was, that we were going to do an interview the next day on Sunday. So when I left on Saturday morning, I thought that the, the, the quote, interview or conversation was going to take place you know on Sunday when uh, I had had a couple of cups of coffee and it was uh, the day was fresh and I was alert and whatnot and so he invited me to dinner Saturday night so what I thought my, my impression for this was just a miscommunication obviously between uh, me and Guy is I thought that I was going over there for dinner Saturday night that we were going to sit around it, it was goddamn Saturday night I was going to hang out with Guy McPherson we were going to get to know each other uh, have a nice dinner uh, have, have a few drinks uh, a few margaritas uh, sit back on a Saturday night and just get to know each other. And so this was what I had in my mind when I went over there Saturday night <clears throat> bringing with me, bringing with me the, pretty much the whole fucking margarita bar. Uh, I, I brought a $33 bottle of Ornitos tequila, the Grand Marnier, the, I brought a, a bag of fresh key limes, the, the margarita mix, I brought pork chops for the gang, with the gang was uh, well, it was Guy, his, uh, what do you call yourself, Pauline, I guess, girlfriend, uh, Guy's, Guy's full-time squeeze, Pauline, and I'm not sure who this very nice young lady named Sarah was, I'm still a little bit confused who Sarah was, very nice young lady. I don't know, about one half of Guy's age. Uh, who was there? And so I brought, uh, I brought drinks, I brought pork chops, I, I brought these little French bread baguettes. I, I, I brought about two-thirds of the dinner uh, with me to the dinner I was invited to. So I get there. Uh, when I get there, I think Guy is installing a lock on the door, I think, uh, you know, to lock out uh, his neighbors down the street. I think, I'm pretty sure he was, he was locking out uh, Mike and Karen Sleva from, uh, from breaking into the mud hut. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I, I'm just getting myself in trouble. Uh, so anyway, 
while he's doing that, I'm sitting there uh, mixing up, uh, you know, the margaritas to start Saturday night. It was the, the, the sun was going down. It was a beautiful Saturday evening. The crickets were out chirping. I was hanging out with uh, Pauline and Sarah. Uh, so I, 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 I start drinking margaritas. Pauline and Sarah and I start drinking margaritas. It's a beautiful Saturday evening. You know, I'm bringing out the pork chops, Pauline seasoning the pork chops and taking them into the kitchen to season them and cook them. And it's just a, a regular Saturday night social engagement. And then Guy walks up in the fading light and says to me, well, hang on, let's go do the interview. And so I said, what do you mean, let's go do the interview? Uh, I, I, you know, I said, I thought that we were doing that tomorrow. Uh, I, I said, guy, I just broke out the fucking margaritas. I said, here, have a margarita. He refused to take a margarita. I was very disappointed that Guy McPherson would not let me give him a margarita. But fuck it, it was a beautiful Saturday night. Uh, I was there with a, with a couple of nice women on a beautiful Saturday night. We were getting ready to put the pork chops on the grill. And so fuck it. I, I was going to enjoy my margaritas. And here's Guy taking me completely by surprise, suggesting that, that we have this interview. And so uh, anyway, we went and had the interview. And the and and you can go there and see it, uh, my interview uh, with Guy. So that was that, and I think what I'm going to do uh, is just go down the comments from people. I I can't do all of these. So anyway, what are the stats? It is now. So it's been four nights. Four nights from this interview, and where do I want to start? Do I want to start with Pauline and Guy's Nature Bats last Facebook page? Do I want to go on this Facebook page of this of this fucking bitch? Never heard from her. Uh, Wendy Bundersky, her near-term human extinction love Facebook page. I'm not sure what the connection is because the near-term human extinction page that, that Mike Farragut runs, I'm going to be interviewing Mike hopefully on Friday. Mike's a great guy. So I, I don't know anyway. I'll, I'll, I don't know what who this Wendy bitch is uh, in, in, in these N-T-H-E love, capital letters love. We'll get back to these fuckers in a minute. I'm, I'm hoping Mike Farragut uh, isn't, is, isn't too associated with them. Anyway, I'm, I'll talk to, uh, definitely when I talk to Mike, I'll find out more about what this love Facebook pages of these of these bunch of haters. It's the biggest bunch of fucking haters. It's the reason I'm not on Facebook. But anyway, so right here, I'm more interested being a, an egomaniac than I am the narcissistic egomaniac that Hamba Little Tail is. So what are the stats? Four days in, we have <clears throat> Guy and I have two thousand two hundred forty nine. Total views, we have 81 thumbs up, 6 thumbs down, and 196 comments. 196 comments. Uh, obviously, guys, I'm not going to sit here and read 196 comments. So I'm just going to go down the list in no particular order and make some comments about the comments. Uh, 
first one, regardless of his personal life, if it were not for Guy McPherson, I would not have seen the shit going on all over the planet. Thank you, Hambone. And here is, yeah, likewise. Here is, same here. Here is, same here, man. This is awesome indeed. Here is, me too. So we've got 19 thumbs up to the comment, uh, it, you know, regardless uh, of all of this uh, little personal shit going on in the Dumasphere Junior High School, uh, you know, you need to, the best you can, separate that from the Doomer message. Here is, does it make me a dork that I like Guy, Paul, meaning Paul Beckwith, and Hambone? Uh, there you go, and getting thumbs up on that. Of, uh, of course, my buddy uh, Andy weighing in. This is a great day indeed. So finally, we get to the first trolls. For the first trolls. So let me comment uh, this guy, Brent K. Smith. Don't know where Brent showed up. Uh, Sam Hambone Littletail showed up at Guy McPherson's residence without an invitation. Guy McPherson had no idea that I was next door. Guy McPherson had invited me to catch up with him in Belize, where he thought he was going to be dead by October, or so I thought. Uh, that is how he got the interview that Guy has been denying him for so long. And look what Hambone does. He puts up a negative quote as the title of the video. Uh, what was the title of the video? Guy McPherson, I'm not a fan of human, ex of human extinction. I am a huge fan of a whole bunch of people dying. This is Guy McPherson gallows humor. And I, and I do want to point out that Guy has posted uh, this video on Nature Bats last. Title and all, I have never heard one complaint from Guy McPherson anywhere uh, about uh, about uh, what we did together. Uh, he has posted it on Nature Bats last. Somebody else from NBL apparently has made a mashup of the interview. Guy posted that as well. Uh, I I saw Guy again. Guy and, um, and um, Pauline on Sunday, uh, they were both extremely friendly to me. Uh, I, I, I hugged both of them, and the last thing that I got walking out the door was an invitation to come visit them in Belize and go swimming in Pauline's saltwater pool the saltwater pool for the end times. So, I, I, I have not heard from a uh, guy. So anyway, let's see. So look what Hambone does. He puts up a negative quote as the title of the video. He could have put up a positive quote, but chose to go dark instead. Why did you do that? Judging from the comments below, it would seem that you, that you have the group that is attacking Guy following you. I'm disappointed. Uh, the conversation was a good one, but the title is a poor title. And then he goes on this absolute uh, junior high attack on Mike and Karen Sleva. I'm not going to lower myself 
to, uh, to all of that crap. Okay. My response of uh, uh, to that, to, to this Brent guy who did think the conversation was good, I have made my position on the unfortunate little spat clear in two previous videos and I stand by everything I have said. All I can say is after spending time with Mike Hatfield Sleva and his neighbor Guy Mc McCoy McPherson is that both of these gentlemen treated me with utmost respect. I pretty much invited myself to Mike's place too. Both of them, and probably more importantly the women they surround themselves with, were welcoming and friendly to me and neither tried to draw me into their fight. Regarding the title of my video, what quote would you have used? My first choice was, I have decades of experience dealing with arrogant, egotistical assholes, or something, it was something damn close to that, you can find it in the, uh, in, in the video. Or how about Paul Beckwith wants to blow up the planet to save the planet. And I agree with Guy on that joke. And I need to talk to Paul Beckwith about blowing up the planet to save the planet. Wow. Going dark with a Guy McPherson quote. What is the chance of that? And then here is Robert Leisure. Hammond, what a shitty thing to label this video with that negative quote. You show up unannounced, empty-handed. Empty-handed. I, 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 well, I do know where this guy got the misimpression uh, that I showed up empty-handed. I showed up with a fucking margarita bar and dinner. Interrupted many times and showed little genuine, you, genuine respect. You could at least have tried to stay awake. Your true colors really show. So then, of course, as I already said, empty-handed, uh, I went through the, the, my arms full of gifts I showed up bearing to dinner. Uh, and then, hmm, I have had no argument from the quoter, meaning Guy McPherson. I notice he has posted this on NBL, and another YouTuber has done a video of it. True, I did show up unannounced in the morning as I did not have his phone number, but returned on his kind invitation to dinner. His invitation to me to have dinner, parentheses, most of which I provided. Please offer a quote from the conversation you would have preferred other than only love remains or any other quote that has not been used in 500 other videos and I will give it serious consideration. There you go and then Bill Hilly uh, to me no matter what you do there is always going to be someone unhappy with it, even if it's none of their business, the relentlessly sad way of things. Okay, and then Sandy, this is hysterical, uh, and you know, a bunch of people uh, who just enjoyed, so basically what it was, it was Guy McPherson and I sitting or having a, a casual conversation. Uh, so anyway, let's see, I'm just, as I say, we got 200, uh, comments here, uh, you know, most people, uh, the vast majority, as I say, 81 thumbs up, six down, the vast majority of these comments being very, 
uh, complimentary to both of us. Um, you know, and on, uh, you know, over and over, uh, people thumb, thumbs upping it. Uh, here is, uh, you know, several people I like who is uh, good old Groot calling me the Howard Stern of the Doomosphere. That's, uh, uh, I, I like that. That's kind of what it was. It was more of a Howard Stern conversation. Uh, okay, here is, this is one for safekeeping in my Doomsday folder, a historic landmark in the saga of the tribe. Nona goes from OMG to OMFG. Uh, now, this is about really the, the only comment, uh, well, one of the few comments talking about Guy, I'm just going to read the comment from Marsha Noren, oh my, Guy McPherson still using the only love remains line while threatening to sue everyone who calls out his misdeeds but first he needs you to fund his legal defense fund. Good luck building audiences for your lecture tours guy. Hmm, okay. Uh, many comments uh, about how drunk I was. Gee, what a surprise. It's Saturday night. Uh, Saturday night, having dinner with somebody, with a group of people uh, out in the country in New Mexico. How dare Hambo Littletail sit there and, and enjoy some fucking uh, drinks on Saturday night. Wow, I really apologize for that. As I say, I was not planning to have the camera on us. But anyway, uh, I make no apologies for, for that. Uh, okay, we are now going to get to the comment, the often repeated comment uh, and, and, and this was lodged at both of us, more uh, towards me than Guy. This is Amy talking about how we were interrupting each other way to the audio sucks, and y'all are interrupting each other way too much. My response, my first response to Amy is those damn crickets. And then, what do you expect when you get the two biggest egomaniacs in the Doomosphere in the same room together and give at least one of them a couple of big shots of tequila? And she responded to that, lots of laughs. Seriously, though, listening to two egomaniacs talk at the same time uh, sometimes one moving on to another topic while the other one is not finished talking about the last topic. I'm 55, old as fuck, does not compute y'all. Okay, guys, and here is my comment to the, at least me interrupting Guy McPherson. This is my published comment, and I'm going to sit here and uh, uh, explain this further here in a minute. Where was my, anyway, here's my comment to Amy. My goal was to keep the mouth from launching into yet another repeat of his manifesto that can be, that can be found on 10,000 other YouTube videos. My video card only last 60 minutes as it is 
And if you are not careful with guys like that, they can eat it up in one question. I'm sorry, in one quote that has been repeated 10,000 times but, you know, before. That is this egomaniac's excuse, and I'm sticking to it. And, and I have to admit I'm a little bit concerned uh, about my interview with Derek Jensen. And, and, and this is, you know, any time that I or anyone else are interviewing these people who have been interviewed 10,000 fucking times. What would be the point uh, of, of me j just asking th these fucking rote questions that Guy McPherson has answered 10,000 fucking times that you can go on and, and find 10,000 versions of it? And, and, uh, and there's, there's one place where I let him get away. If you, if you go listen to the video, a perfect example uh, of, of what I'm talking about here is Guy mentioned some book that he and his brother wrote like 20 fucking years ago that sold five or six copies on uh, probably on lulu.com or whatever. Anyway, and you hear me say, and I think, oh shit, uh, what's this going to turn into? And I say, Guy, give us, I should have said 25 word, I said give us a 50 word summation of that book. 50 words. I was looking to spend about 30 seconds because, you know, I'm sure it's a great book, Guy, but I don't think that's what people wanted to hear about. And what the fuck happens? He, he went off on a terror about this goddamn book, which I'm sure is a great book. I'm not knocking your book, Guy. I'm just saying, you know, we had 60 minutes at most, and I wasn't going to spend 30 fucking minutes talking about some book you wrote 20 fucking years ago. You know, I'm sorry, brother. Uh, this is why, and so I was probably being oversensitive, but, uh, you know, whenever I heard Guy McPherson, uh, as he tends to do, come on, guys, uh, admit it, uh, uh, every time I heard him, what I perceive to be launching in to one of his monologues that you can find in, in, in a hundred thousand other places on YouTube already, I derailed the thought. I derailed it. Yes, I interrupted him. It was not because I was drunk on tequila. It was because I wanted to keep the fresh conversation flowing. And now I'm just going to launch off, you know, into a bigger rant. I know a lot of people listening to this casual conversation with me all liquored up on a Saturday night with Guy McPherson are going to find this hard to believe. But I actually have five years of journalism training. Uh, for seven years of my life, I made my living as, as a journalist, as a reporter and editor. Uh, where I spent my entire life interviewing people. I spent five years in college uh, learning how to interview people. And there was just a long discussion of this on NPR on Media Matters a, uh, last week, an excellent discussion of this on Media Matters with these guys from Meet the Press being interviewed. And one thing they talked at length about is, you know, when you have a problem with the person you're interviewing, that, that, if, that if you are hostile towards that person or that person is hostile towards you, you know, how does that affect your ability to interview them? And, and it was an excellent question. It's something that you spend a lot of time in journalism school. And I, I can't remember the guy's answer. You can probably find this on npr.org. Put the Meet the Press Media Matters interview. You can probably call it up. Uh, excellent uh, interview with these two guys whose name I can't remember. It, it, you know, in just talking about this subject, 
And, and well, just because I, I have a problem with, with, uh, with this little uh, junior high school drama uh, and a bigger problem with the second chapter of this snowballing drama, uh, does that mean that, and, 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 that's, and it's, let's not even talk about Guy McPherson, it's anybody. It, you know, there, there's every single human being on this planet, I could, I, I'm quite sure, uh, if I got to know them for more than 10 minutes, I would find some aspects of either things they believe, their character flaws, whatever, that I do not like, that I find distasteful, and I guarantee you that virtually anybody on the planet, probably starting with my own mother, could spend 10 minutes in a room with Hambone Littletail and start discovering things about me that they don't like. And so, so what does that mean? Because there might be, I might have some little problem with, uh, with the person I'm interviewing out there that, that, uh, that A, I'm not going to interview them, or B, that it's just going to be an attack. Uh, you know, I, I was raised in the South. Uh, just because, you know, I would absolutely love to interview Donald Trump. He would be the number one person on planet Earth I want to interview, the single most despicable human being on planet Earth who absolutely repulses me. But he is the number one person that I want to interview on the planet. And, and, and Guy and Pauline, I'm not suggesting on any level that Guy McPherson is anywhere. Uh, I, I'm not suggesting that, that I'm lumping Guy McPherson in with Donald Trump. What, what I'm just saying is I don't care who I'm interviewing. It, uh, you know, I'm still going to sit there and be friendly to them and not just be a total complete asshole. Although, uh, apparently a lot of these people on this love Facebook page, uh, which I'm going to get, which I'm going to wrap up with here in, in a minute. Uh, anyway... So anyone who, who thought that I was going to go in there and throw Guy McPherson under the bus, I, as I said in my, in my two earlier videos, if you're waiting for Hambun Littletail to uh, throw Guy McPherson under the bus, it, it ain't going to happen. Okay, anyway, good God. And... Um, You know, most of them just over and over, thumbs up, and uh, even the even the insults were done uh, with uh, w with a sense of humor. This is pure heaven. Thanks, Guy and Hambone. Christmas arrived early. I've had an amazing day, but this is the cherry on top. Very outstanding, good show. That's some good old Valhalla. Uh, several comments about, including one from Sandy, about how Hambone Little Tail was starstruck. Here is Jay Savick uh, calling me a crazy in love teenager. Huh. There you go. Talking about how because, because I was not, according to the vast majority of people, because I did not throw Guy McPherson under the bus because I did not 
going there acting like some fucking asshole that I was a starstruck teenager. Uh, anybody who uh, thinks that Hambun Little Tail is a starstruck teenager in love, uh, I, I got some bad news for you. Now, uh, I, I, I could make a comment, a, a little bit mean comment, uh, and, and I might as well say it because obviously Guy is never going to speak to me after this, is when, particularly when you're in, sitting in someone's home, someone who has invited you into their living room and invited you to dinner, uh, you know, obviously... Uh, you're, you're going to suck up to them, particularly if uh, they are like me, like me, an, uh, an egomaniacal narcissist. If you want to get uh, an egomaniac narcissist comfortable with you, you suck up to them. Like, you probably will not hear me sucking up to Derek Jensen tomorrow because Derek Jensen is not an egomaniac narcissist uh, in the interview with Mike Sleva, uh, with Mike and Karen. I'm not sucking up to them uh, because, uh, because they are not egomaniac narcissists. Anyway, guys, this could go on and on, but I want to just quickly uh, look at a couple of comments coming from Nature Bat's last Facebook page uh, on Sat. This was before the interview. I'm not on NBL, uh, so I don't know what the comments have looked like since then. Um, so Pauline starts out, look who dropped in unannounced, false. And uh, here is, oh, this same Brent Kirk. Brent, the same guy, the same troll, telling a uh, guy to be wary of me. And then here is Raylan Gallaudy uh, talking to Pauline, surely you know the cliche about being cautious of enemies bearing gifts. And Pauline responded, he did not bring gifts. Uh, but now this was in the morning, so uh, I, I, so Paul, so she, so she made, so she makes that comment on her Facebook page that I showed up not bringing any gifts. Uh, on Saturday morning uh, when I was absolutely taken by surprise and so this is how these rumors get started so it shows up in my fucking comments that I showed up to dinner not bringing any gifts. When I showed up there I didn't know if I was going to be shot or not. Uh, anyway uh, so, but those few comments on that Facebook page before the interview are uh, quickly get taken over as this little fucking uh, this little fucking pissing contest between Guy and Mike Sleva takes off that that Mike is not lowering himself. And as, as far as that, guys, uh, my comment, and, 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 and again, I want to make it clear, and I greatly appreciate it, that neither Guy McPherson nor Mike and Karen Sleva ever tried to get me involved with, into this little fight. Are you following me? Neither one of them tried to convince me to come over to their side. They both knew it was Mike Sleva who suggested I go talk to Guy. 
And, and uh, Mike knew I was over at Guy's place. Guy and Pauline knew that I was hanging out with Mike and Karen that weekend. And, and, and to all of their credit, none of them were, were trying to drag me into it. Now, you can make your own conclusions listening to my interview with Guy McPherson. Go to around minute 28 and then the very last minute of my conversation with Guy McPherson and listen to the way he talks about Mike Sleva. Then I want you to listen to my interview with Mike and Karen Sleva, uh, who had heard the comments that uh, Guy McPherson made about Mike in his interview with me, and I want to hear, I want you to listen to Mike, particularly, talking about Guy McPherson. And you draw your own conclusions on, on who is the bigger man in here. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a no-brainer who is, is taking the moral high ground in this. And it's not Guy McPherson. But finally, I want to talk about this. Uh, again, I hope to be interviewing Mike Farragut from Extinction Radio and the near-term human extinction page. I don't know what this is all about. Uh, this is not Mike Farragut's page. I guess it's some woman some uh, nasty bitch named Wendy Bandersky, who's the administrator of a Facebook page with love in capital letters. Uh, and I can't read, I, I can only show, I can only read the first few comments. Uh, and it pretty much is just, it, it, it's absolutely uh, trash talking me. Here is, here, is, here is Wendy from the Love Facebook page, uh, you, you know, calling me hairball. I mentioned how uh, someone once called me hairball. Uh, here is, Hambone is a little insufferable in this video. And the response from Wendy, a little, I think he is an utter asshole. Um, here is, you know, now that Hambone has met Guy, I wonder if his attitude toward Guy will change. My attitude toward Guy McPherson has not changed one iota. Not one iota. I, I always figured, and Mike Sleva, when he suggested I go over there, told me that if I went over there, that uh, Guy McPherson would be absolutely welcoming, polite, uh, friendly, professional. It's everything. I, uh, in, in my uh, opinion of Guy McPherson, has not changed one iota. Every single opinion I had of Guy McPherson before that interview uh, is the same as it is at the end of the interview and four days later to answer your question, Jeff. Uh, I have no apologies to make to Guy McPherson. Guy McPherson has no apologies to make to me. I apologize to Guy McPherson for calling him a fucking asshole. Guy Mc, I mean, a fucking idiot. Guy McPherson has apologized to me for calling me an asshole. The last time I saw Guy McPherson, the first time I saw the man, I gave him a big hug. I gave him a big hug on, on my video. And the last time I laid eyes on the man, I gave him a big hug. And if I ever see him again, I'll give him a big hug. Jeez, uh, and good old Kevin Hester, thank you. Uh, uh, before we get to Kevin, here is David Petratus. 
I can't stand to listen to anything Ham Hock pulls out of his pie hole. Here he is. He, meaning Hambone, is acting and sounding just like an old drunkard. And DJ Rebel 